We can't grow without shrinking the world around us. But how can we shrink the world around us without first becoming a giant? And how can we become a giant without substantial growth? This paradox has been plaguing philosophers for centuries. And as the world has gotten bigger, it's only become more complicated. In the summer of 2022, we lost our beloved guitarist, Jake Sabetta, to the throes of capitalism. Jake was a true friend and a great bandmate, but increasing rent, a long commute, and an influx of Venezuelan refugees tore him away from us to more humanitarian callings. Jake is the kindest person I know. We needed a new guitarist, but not just any guitarist. We needed someone we could bond with, someone who could bring the band even closer together. A guitarist with chops, feel, good rhythmic sensibilities, and a comforting smile. There was only one person. We needed Austin Bourdon, the legendary guitarist of Denver dream pop supergroup Milady. It's one thing to be friendly with someone, but it's another thing to have a friend. What makes someone a real friend? Knowing that you can joke around with each other without hurting the other person's feelings. The plan. Get Austin to join our band by playing an elaborate prank. And what could be more surprising than a massage happening in the middle of a recording session? Sponsored content is an agenda as much as it is a band. And our music is best described as extreme rhythmic propaganda. If this was going to work, I would need to create as much confusion and chaos as possible. So I interviewed bassist Chris Voss and drummer John Baldwin to find out if they knew what was really going on. I might could use some filling in on the details. Do you know about the ulterior motive behind all of it? The ulterior motive, I mean, are we stating everything for the cameras here? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I know that somebody is going to get an unpleasant surprise that they think is going to be a massage. But... Well, no, no, that's not... Uh, there's no ulterior motive. That it, there is a massage, and it's a very normal massage. There's no, um, no surprises in the massage itself. Okay. So what I know is we are looking to bring in another guitarist and to do that, we are playing a sort of ruse, bring, bringing him in to perform like a, a little live session and then we're gonna have someone having a massage in front and he is unaware of this, but we're aware of this. I'm aware of this at least. Yes, I don't know yes, who else yes. is aware of this. John Baldwin is a wild man. He rides his bike in sub-zero temperatures and subsists on fruit which he forages around Denver in the summer. And a nice squishy morning. He's one of the most consistent people I know. And if my plan was going to work, I would need to shake things up for him. Ever since I met John, he's had the same facial hair. John told me that he was beginning to use some dating apps. So I went ahead and created a digital mock-up to optimize his facial hair. Well, along the lines of everything that we're talking about, you know, we're always trying to shake things up. Um, and I always want us to be somewhat out of our comfort zone. Um, and so I have a document here for you, John. All right. It's an idea, it's a proof of concept. I want you to take a look at it and tell me what you think and tell me if you think it's possible um, for you to achieve this before the session. Okay. Remind me the date of the session again. The 25th. It's next week. Okay. <laughs> you know... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's... It's not impossible. Um, Halloween's coming up. Maybe we could work out some sort of deal where you help me find a costume that goes well with this, and I could do it. Well, the, the robe. I think the robe would go really well with that. Mm. Yeah, but what? Oh, for for Halloween. For Halloween, yeah. Oh, because you could just, yeah, make that permanent. Yeah, yeah. not permanent. Permanent, yeah. For a week. Permanent for a couple <laughs> months or years. I'm gonna shave the first of November. I knew that John would need a lot of convincing to make a change to his facial hair. So I told him that Austin's interest in joining our band hinged on John's mustache. Not only is it possible, I think this is the next move for him. Something like this. Wow. But he's, he's agreed to work on it and see if it's possible. 
It has to be. That's something that looks so natural that you give it a couple weeks and it's there. Yeah. He just hasn't tried it yet. Everything was going according to plan. And then John told me that his Halloween costume would be Dexter. And Dexter doesn't have a horseshoe mustache. And then as far as, as, far as the mustache, um, I mean, this, this could be a serious problem. You are unwilling to wear a bald mask on your face for this Dexter costume? I mean, I'm just saying, like, it would be easier to find a fake mustache than it would be to fake being bare chin. Yeah, but what's more, con what's more convincing in both situations? Do you think the bald mask is gonna be more convincing? I think so, yeah, I definitely think so. I mean, the main thing I'm worried about is like, Austin is, you know, he seems pretty eager to play with us and I don't wanna give him the wrong impression if he sees you wearing a false mustache. I think he needs to be convinced with the real deal. Okay, so yeah, I get it, I'm just, uh... I am a facial hair accessory to uh, winning the favor of uh, another musician. I think so. I think I think this is really going to seal the deal for us. I mean, did you have any other costume ideas besides Dexter? Uh, what about Hulk Hogan? I don't think that's who I want to be for Halloween. As part of my interview with Chris, I asked him to do a rig rundown of his pedal board. Chris loves his pedals and has spent the better part of the last few years perfecting his sound, so I knew this would excite him. But what Chris doesn't know is that I snuck his least favorite pedal, the Boss DS1, into his signal chain through a series of hidden cables. It was important that Chris feel adequately surprised because I had another surprise waiting for him during the session. Well, let's move on to the, the rig rundown section. Ooh. Um, I'd like for you to show us the tones the tone from off the grid. Off the grid. Oh, oof. Well, show show me whatever you want to show me first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Off. Because you off got a lot grid. going on here. Uh, a fair few things, but off the grid's got some beef to it. Um. And let me. Ah, uh, you know what's happening here? Actually, I'm getting a fuzz from my reverb pedal. That is not supposed to be there. So now, just kidding, something else is happening. Hmm. Um, there's an awful lot of distortion, honestly. Um, curious. Yeah, that's heavy. That's heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Off the grid deserves a good, good, good scoop, a, a distortion, a little, little fuzz action in here. Yeah. All right, now show me some of your, some of your clean, kind of spacey tones, because I feel like that's something that you really play around with a lot. All right. I do actually gotta figure out why this is. Distorted. Oh. Yo. I gotta pause for a second, actually. I see, I see. All right. This is making a lot more sense to me. What's happening? Um, I, I lost my cable to an interdimensional void behind the amps. It's, it's, getting, it's getting run into this hole and it goes nowhere. And, I, and then out of it is coming some other cable. That's so weird. It's pretty, it's pretty strange. Yeah, actually. Um, I never had this good fuzz game before. Just a few days before the session, what I thought was just a sore throat turned out to be COVID. I had made it so far, but I had made it nowhere at all. And to make matters worse, I had certainly exposed my bandmates while conducting their interviews. Postponing the session proved to be a real challenge. My symptoms were long gone, but the test kept coming back positive. Austin became harder and harder to reach. Days would go by between our text messages. 
I felt like I was in high school again, texting my crush. I needed to pivot, so I did what I would have done in high school. Hired a doppelganger to sit in with us and make Austin jealous. So I got a little bit anxious about booking the session and everything, so I ended up finding a fill-in. And now I'm in like this kind of awkward situation where the fill-in has agreed to play, and you know, they're already, you know, really excited about it. Um, so you won't be playing with us for the session, but you will still be playing with us for the show on December 16th. So I was I thinking, it. now what's interesting about this whole situation is that um, the band, the rest of the band, doesn't know that there's a fill-in. They still think that you're playing with us for the session. And the fill-in has been told to perform as you. I love it. I had the perfect candidate, Rafael Nava, the singer and guitarist of one of my favorite bands, Shadowwork. He's an incredible singer, has great stage presence, and has an uncanny resemblance to Austin Bourdon. For this whole thing, your name will be Austin Bourdon. <laughs> Austin Bourdon. Yeah, and let me show you real quick. Um, here's Austin. He is, he is the guitarist for a band called Milady. Okay. And uh, he was initially our fill-in for this whole project. But now you're the fill-in for the fill-in. I have an image of the fill-in too, just so you can see who is going to be doing the impersonation of you. This is perfect. Yes. This will work. So he's gonna come in here, he's gonna say, hey, my name is Austin Bourdon, and um, I'm the guitarist of Milady. I'm from <laughs> Whitehall, Michigan. I played in a band called, uh, what was the first name? City of June. City of June, which later became Lakeland. Lakeland. So should I like dress up as him? No, you don't have to dress up as him. Okay, because I could get into dangerous territory. Wow. Well, I guess, are there any other trivia facts or like fun anecdotes about your life that would be helpful for, for a doppelganger? Give me a, a topic. Do you have any dietary restrictions, foodborne illnesses in, in the past? Have you ever experienced any yeah. serious illness? Now, serious, no, but I've been lactose intolerant for a few years now. Okay. And. It's one of those things where it's not bad enough that it doesn't really stop me from eating dairy when I really want it. Okay. That could be tough. really useful, actually. I think it'll be essential for, for anyone impersonating yeah. me to know. I, you know, kind of dug deep. I did some research and I learned some things about him. He's lactose intolerant. Okay. So if you could mention that casually, I think that would <laughs> okay. maybe help yeah. sell it. Yeah. But the thing about his lactose intolerance is like, you can still eat cheese. Like he says he's lactose intolerant. Um, and I mean, during practice, I was gonna order pizza for everyone, but I was like, oh, he's lactose intolerant. So I ordered burritos and he got cheese in his burrito. So, yeah. so okay. he doesn't really care. Yeah. So you can be kind of reckless with it. Okay. Um, bringing in Raph could complicate the session in just the right way to take everyone out of their comfort zone. Raph thinks he's surprising the band by showing up as Austin. And the band thinks that we're surprising Austin with a massage. But the band doesn't know that Raph is playing Austin, and Raph doesn't know about the massage. Everything was a conspiracy, but no one would know the true plot. My solo practice session with Raph went really well. He had already learned the song and even put his own twist on it. He rewrote my lyrics even though I asked him not to, but it turned out great. Everything was going according to plan. Andrea was already turning the recording studio into a massage studio when Chris told us that he was inviting Raph over to jam. If Raph saw the massage studio decorations, he would know this is no ordinary recording session. We both told Chris he would have to go over to Raph's. On the day of the session, I gave Chris and John their robes and asked them to play massage music while we waited for Austin to arrive.
yourself so they really know it's you? Um, of course. Uh, I'm from Whitehall, Michigan, as you guys might as well know. Um, unfortunately, I am lactose intolerant, but I do love, absolutely love cheese, anyways. Um, I'm a white man, of course. Um, and I've been living in Denver, Colorado for a couple years. Yeah. I'm in a band called My Lady, so you guys may know. So, yeah, it's a pleasure to be here with my Hello, amigos, of course, and uh, like the usual, I'm Austin. Thanks for playing with us. Of course, anytime. Six, seven, eight, too much, I'm feeling flattered, I'm just 
Are we not all Austin Bourdain deep down inside, eating cheese, claiming to be lactose intolerant, pretending to be someone else's doppelganger? We fill in for ourselves, digging a deeper and deeper hole every day, until one day someone asks us, who is that man behind that mustache, behind that bald mask? Every second is a surprise, a truth within disguise. We tell ourselves we know what's right, but one of us won't be going home tonight. <laughs> 